G'day fellow flight simmers and random YouTubers. Today I'll, um, I'll be going through a bit of a quasi-tutorial, if you like, on uh, air traffic controlling and in particular one of my favourite positions, uh, which is Melbourne Centre and in particular Snowy Sector. Um, and uh, I'll just be explaining, trying to explain uh, some of the things that I'm doing, why I'm doing them, and uh, hopefully you'll see some benefits out of that. And um, who knows, I might be getting feedback from some of my viewers to educate myself. As you can see, uh, this light grey area is the area that I'm controlling. Now, um, I haven't established uh, contact with this Qantas 455, but if I want to establish contact, I just uh, select him, hit the F6 key, and up comes this. So I just left click, and now that's sent a notice out to this guy. So if you ever want to send a if you need to contact uh, pilots. Now this guy, he's going to Mount Hotham. So if I hit the negative key, highlight him, hit the negative key, he's, so he's descending. If he contacts me, you know, because it's only such a, such a short trip, I'm not really worried about if he contacts me or not. He doesn't present any hazards to any other aircraft. Uh, this guy down here. G'day, sweetheart. Qantas 455, climbing through Five ball, three, one, two, four, three, six, zero. My 455, good day, Melbourne Centre. Uh, just confirm, uh, climb to flight level 360. Climb flight level 360, Qantas 455. So, yeah, so this guy... Um, Now, this New Zealand uh, 1223, he's about to leave my airspace. Um, now, this is my pre-active list. So if you haven't established any contact, first of all, you're going to see this if nothing's been initiated. So with this guy here, if I hit this PRE, left click, that disappears there. And I may have explained it. Now, I'm basically controlling him now. So... If he should contact me, this um, e entry in here where it's blank means I haven't established contact with him. So um, if he calls me, I'll just say to him, you know, as you can see up here, flight level, his required flight level is 330, so I'll just clear him. And then when he gets to the edge of my airspace, I'll just tell him, send him off to Unicom. Because, oh, by the way, you can, if I right click anywhere. No. Yeah, in true to form, this guy's decided to contact me. New Zealand 1223, good day, sender. Maintain flight level 330. Maintain flight level 330, New Zealand 1223. So, because I now have established contact him, I'll um, put in the 330 and it appears in white, so I just middle mouse click there and it goes green. So now I, yeah, I know I've established contact with him and uh, everything's okay. So, yeah, just if I want to move this... If uh, Melbourne Centre, HMF 299, not 5000. Sorry, Station Coin, say again your call sign. Alpha Juliet Mike, um, 299. At 5,000. Alpha Juliet Mike, confirm. Alpha Juliet Mike, climb to flight level 370, cancel speed restrictions. Up to flight level 370 and cancel speed restriction, um, Alpha Juliet Mike 299. Yeah, that was a bit clumsy, wasn't it? Yeah, so if I want to move this and it gets in your way, just right click anywhere here and it just you can drag it anywhere you want. I, personally, I like to either have it here or have it up here, but and then just right click again to release it. So that's sort of, um, yeah, nothing else really. I've, you can see I've got four four aircraft under my control. Uh, this will be the, another guy.
you can see the, the filled in triangle. This triangle indicates the direction of movement. That's basically, so he's moving in a westerly direction. You can see if I highlight this, you see this guy up here, Alpha Juliet Mike. Not sure what that. Apple Center, good day, Qantas 227, climbing past seeing 3000. Oh, it's 227. Good day, Melbourne Centre. Climb to flight level 350. Climb flight level 350. Quantos 227. Offer Juliet Mike. Uh, cancel SID. Track direct to Docel planned route. Track direct to Docel uh, and then planned route. Um, is Jamaica 299. So I've just gave him a bit of track shortening, so that way he, he sort of gets a good separation of this guy and this guy, even though they're going at different levels. But I like to give him a bit of longitudinal distance as well. Because normally, uh, if, I, if I hand him off to the centre control, I like to give, give him 20 nautic miles, it's just a personal preference. Um, and it gives him that nice... Because as they come into approach controller's area, um, you know, and as they start to decrease their speed uh, to set themselves up for the approach, the the first aircraft will be slowing down quite considerably, uh, while the other aircraft may be uh, keeping up his speed. And so uh, it doesn't take long for the aircraft uh, behind to sort of catch up. So 20 nautical miles gives a good buffer. That's my personal preference. Um, not sure what other people do, but... Once again, it's not too much because these guys are flight... Like this guy here, he's going to flight level 350 and this guy's going to flight level 370. So they are... There is... As long as you keep one separation standard current, you know. Now this is the ATIS at Melbourne. You can see that um, one six arrivals, runway two seven departures. So we need to. I know it's early days yet, but when at flight level three six zero, they sort of um, round about just after NABA at that level three six zero. You use the one in three rule um, to give an approximation as to when they start their top of descent. But normally around about 360, you're looking at just over 110 miles. So just after NABA. So we've got to be start to thinking what sort of um, star clearance we're going to be giving this guy. Obviously I've been asked to extend to Wollongong. So, and the reason is, is I, I normally just, I'm not, if I extend to Wollongong, I've got to look after all these aircraft coming from the north. And uh, with Sydney Approach, that job is, probably makes my job a little bit easier. But if Sydney Approach wasn't um, online, then I would be hesitant to be able to give effective uh, controlling services to aircraft coming from the north and then from the east and then that, or from the west and south and, so uh, with Sydney Approach, that makes the job a little bit easier. But um, yeah, uh, in this case, only taking departures to the south or uh, it just relieves a bit of the pressure off me. At my age, you can't uh, have too much pressure in your life. Okay, so we looked at the ATIS. We sort of, we're thinking one step ahead. We all sort of got an idea what this guy, what sort of star clearance we know the... Uh, arrival runway is runway 16, so uh, Qantas 4.45 in the interim, I'll give him 16 and it comes up the Lizzie 8. Now I haven't given it to him yet because I haven't cleared him down to 210 or 250, whatever level because, so I know that I haven't, even though it's already been set up, but I haven't given it to him because this hasn't, this level in here where it says 360 in there, I haven't, uh, that hasn't changed, so now this guy, uh, he's sort of about to, this is, he's in class uh, 9000, let me have a look, make sure you've you got to know your airspace, <laughs> having said that. I 
Oh, that's another thing. Um, I like to set up the Melbourne for the duty runway, uh, runway 16 and runway 16 names. So that gives us an idea of... Uh, when somebody is away from the keyboard, I just type that in. Um, so he's going to be outside my airspace, so I'll just hand him off to... Just so... I know he's an IFR aircraft and you've got to keep him, but he's outside, he's going outside my airspace, so he's not going to be a, a problem. Now, as a centre controller... Uh, it's always to stay ahead of the game in that in that in that sense. You can see that this four eight indicates their ground speed, and you can see this guy his ground speed four one. So you know that there's no there's no closing speed going to be ever present um, here. So there's not really there's no need to issue any speed restrictions because this guy is just going to be opening up his distance because of his greater ground speed. Um, now, uh, you've got to understand in the flight simulation world, different people have different weather engines or whatever. Some use the default Microsoft, some use Active Sky if they're using P3D or Active X Plane. So that's a consideration because, unlike the real world, the air weather might be different between each other. So that's something you always got to keep a, uh, you've got to keep an eye on. And the way you do it is just keep an eye on their ground speed because that will, doesn't matter what weather engine, you'll always, this gives you an indication of whether, um, and you can see this guy starting to increase his speed. He started from 4.0, he's now, oh, he's gone back down to 4.1, but he got up to 4.3 there, but always keep an eye on there. And if there's going to be any closing uh, speed, So things at the moment are pretty, well, they're not really, um, nothing's really happening here. So until when this guy gets within range or before his top of descent, I might, or unless something else happens, I might just pause it and uh, I'll get right back. Okay, um, before I, actually, I should have explained. This guy here, if I left-click on his flight plan, you can see the first thing you've got to notice is that whether an IFR or a VFR aircraft. Now, if he'd contacted me, because he's an IFR aircraft, I've still got to monitor. He's got to monitor my frequency. But um, you can see down here, he's in class Echo, which is 8,500. So he's going to, and he's going to, Hotham, I think, Mount Hotham or Horsham. And uh, so when they're leaving your controlled airspace, you're an IFR aircraft, all you need to tell them is leave control area descending and you have to tell them the traffic, no reported IFR aircraft and the area Q and H. So that's, an, that's for an IFR aircraft. Okay, and for a, well, for a VFR aircraft, it's radar and identification services terminated, frequency change approved because... If they're VFR, they're on their own. You don't have to provide them in the air traffic. The onus is, uh, is on uh, them to look out for themselves because they chose to be VFR. So that's the sort of major consideration. Now, this guy looked like he's... When they're in a black uh, a square, um, it, it means they've dropped out. Now, to see if they've actually dropped out or not, what you do is you hit the shift key and you keep the shift and plus key together. And if that disappears, you know he's dropped out. He's into connection or he's logged off for whatever reason, you know, because real life gets in the way. Um, so that's the thing I should have pointed out with this, people leaving your controlled airspaces. The other thing is, in this day and age, and it fascinates me, you know, and I know that, you know, um, you have the interesting call signs. And I know when you're a young guy, you really don't know much and you're getting into, but you think this guy here would come up with a more original or with the internet 
It's not like when in my days you had, there was a library and that's where you got your information. These days with the internet and YouTube, you'd think this bloke, and I'm assuming he's just a young guy, which is fair enough, but really, I mean, you, you think you'll, the penny wouldn't drop and say, well, I can't just call myself Qantas. Uh, and I hate judging or making prejudgments on, on people, but this guy's just a goose. Uh, that's short and simple. I'm sorry to say that. Whoever you are, mate, or if you're watching my YouTube channel, I mean, really, I mean, at this day and age, you, you can't see, oh, hang on, why is this guy calling himself Qantas 149 or Qantas 127, you know, like QFA 455? You'd think, well, maybe there might be something to it. But no, nah, I'll just call myself Qantas. The guy's a goose. Sorry, I don't like to judge, prejudge people, but anyhow. Anything else happens, which may be interesting. Um, and he hasn't come back yet. That's why I like to put AFK. So as soon as he comes back, he'll be getting close to his top of descent. He'll be around here somewhere. Um, and I'll give him his star clearance. The star clearance won't be anything amazing. It'll be just like, uh, you just read it off here on his flight strip. Qantas 455, these, uh, you clear the Lizzie 8 Alpha Rival, runway 16. When ready, descend to flight level 210. Now, there's another thing. I've noticed over the... when You you know when the, a pilot is inexperienced or not? When you give them a when ready, descend to flight level 210, and guess what? Within about 20 seconds, he starts descending, and he's about 250 miles away from, you know, his destination. Uh and, you know, these days, like I said, you use the run in three rule. If you multiply that by three and take off at zero, it gives you an approximate idea. So if you multiply 36 or you take the zero off, you multiply 36 by three, it gives you 108. So his top of descent is about 108 miles from Melbourne. That's how you, that's the one in three rule. But anyhow, so you, and if you look at this as a crow flies, if I highlight him and I hit the backspace and I go down to Melbourne, so he's 238, so he's well and true, you know, like from here to there, from Nabbit to there, it's 38 miles, so it's about from here, even there, it's 240, so um, actually it'll probably be around about here somewhere. Even that's, oh, well, that's 84 miles. So, yeah, about there, about there, that's where it'll start, just after Naba. So, but when he reports back, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, nothing else to report, really. So I'll pause the video, and uh, if anything exciting or another interesting call sign comes up, I'll get right back to you. Okay, I may not have told you this, or but whenever you see this, see this funny-looking star sign on a, on your radar. Uh, it means he's under a ADSB uh, radar coverage, which means automatic dependent survey surveillance broadcast, which is a different type of radar service. So I don't. It's not a primary radar service, and you you like uh, for example when you get this little round um, little round uh, oval basically this round uh, configuration. So this guy is, uh, and this is what's really good about this VATS, is it gives you an idea of what, what sort of radar surveillance uh, an aircraft is now. I've handed it off to a Unicom because, but you can see that even there is radar coverage, but it's under ADSB. So when you get this funny looking sign, and if you look at my departure reports, I talk about ADSB surveillance, and when you're making a, a departure report, um, what sort of, if you're either an, in a non-radar surveillance or a, if you're in a radar surveillance, and this gives you an idea if that aircraft is or isn't, because depending on the radar coverage, the ra uh, departure reports are different. So, and so you expect the aircraft to make a different departure report as, um, as compared to if he wasn't in any um, radar surveillance environment. So that's, that's handy, and this, uh, that, that SIS does a really good job which other um, ATC clients never showed that. So um, I know this, this VATSIS was developed by, uh, by a, a true 
air traffic controller and so nothing like the real thing uh, to be able to simulate something. Uh, it's like uh, looking at YouTube channels and listening to a guy who's been there and done that and being a pilot or one that decided I'll become a YouTube hero and talk you know, rubbish for 45 minutes and everyone loves him. Anyhow, but that's another story. I won't go into it. All right. Um, just saying that this Qantas 463, as you can see, I've extended the coverage here, but I'm only taking departures to the south. So, um, yeah, so, and because I've got uh, Sydney Approach online, so that relieves a bit of the, the stress for me. Um, yeah, so now I've given this guy his star clearance because, uh, as you can see here, he's been cleared to flight level 210. So, um, and that's all really, and I expect him to come on board. I don't know, sometimes they give us the flight plan. Like this guy here, if I'd, if I'd been smart and looked under flight plan, I would have known that AJM, here it says call sign Air Jamaica. So this guy's done the right thing. So I should have looked at that before I asked him what his call sign was. So that's something I, I normally do. Maybe it's because of the fact that I was doing a YouTube video, I got nervous, who knows. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's the situation at the moment. Uh, anything else happens, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so a couple of things have happened. Uh, this guy, remember, if you remember, he dropped out now. He's come back, uh, so they're not a problem. He's, uh, he's, yeah, he doesn't present any problems. This guy, he's approaching 210, so I'll drop him down to 9,000. Qantas 455D send to 9000, QNH 1017. 9000, QNH 1017, Qantas 455. And I've had this guy come on frequency. Oh well, Sydney Approach is closing in five minutes. Well, that might be a good time for us to close down too because I've got to be somewhere. Um, now, uh, Sydney Atis, they're just doing runway 25 and because the winds are 21 knots. So they've just basically got um, the headwind all the way. Now, if you're a large aircraft, I'm not sure how that's going to affect you. Uh, there's been an ATIS change. Um, not sure what it is, but anyhow. So, uh, yeah, this guy's come on frequency, so I've cleared him up to flight level 360. Always be aware with the VATSIM environment, one of the common mistakes that happens time and time again, once again, you would think, in any um, Pilots get it wrong flying, you know, with flying eastbound. Now, if you're flying eastbound, in other words, 0 to 179 degrees magnetic, you fly odd number. If you fly westbound, 180 to 359 inclusive, you fly east um, westbound, you fly even number if you're an IFR. If you're VFR, it's the same plus 500. In other words, if I'm a VFR aircraft and I'm flying from, say, Melbourne down here to east sail over here somewhere, uh, I'm flying at odd number plus 500. Uh, if I'm flying the other way, um, if I'm going that way, I'm flying an even number plus 500. So if I'm going out to whereas Mount Gambier out here, VFR, I'm flying, you know, 4,500, 6,500, whatever. And it's just such a basic mistake, but uh, it happens all the time. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a VATSIM environment. Now, I've looked at this guy and, uh, well, we'll see. I won't make any calls at the moment. Just see. In the VATSIM environment, you've got to be prepared for an inexperienced pilot. Thankfully, VATSIM have decided to offer pilot rating, but unfortunately, it's not mandatory. Um, now, who knows what the idea, why that is. I mean, it was good enough for controllers to come on and have some prior training. So anyhow, because uh, if I can show you that sim, if I look at this guy here, you see on the second line, no pilot rating. So he might be a newbie and uh, you don't expect much from him. But anyhow, we'll see how he goes. He might prove me wrong. 
and he's flying the CRJ, which is uh, just a new aircraft recently released. Um, not sure who, who buy it, but anyhow, apparently it's very nice. Controls of the set Alpha Julia Golf of you. Alpha Julia Golf, uh, G'day Melbourne Centre, climb to flight level 380. Yes, I've, uh, I've suggested climb to flight level 280, if that's possible. I'll leave to flight level at 280. Alpha Julia got, say, uh, required, say again the required level. Uh, flight level 280, so let's go uh, for Julia Golf, Roger, you recleared amended flight level 280. Well, I'm coming 280, so the Julia Golf. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want that. Now, there's only one possible explanation. Because um, any person that knows, see the CRJ, I'm not sure if they're able to fly at a I think their ceilings are around about the 40-odd thousand mark. 40 might be more, 45,000, something like that. And the higher you fly, the less, the thinner the atmosphere and the less fuel you burn, and I won't get into it all, but basically it becomes more economical. But um, So I'm not sure why you'd want to fly level 280. I'm not sure. These, got, these things can go right up to flight level 4, 30, something like that. So anyhow... Whatever, it's his choice, he's the pilot. So now I should be looking at 370, I've got to give him uh, his star clearance. So if you look here, it's highlighted straight away. It's, I can just read it off there because I've prepared myself. Air Jamaica 299, a star clearance available. Uh, over to you, Nicole, Air Jamaica 299. Press by. It Air Jamaica 299 negative, sir. I've got your star clearance for you. Uh, go ahead with that star clearance, Air Jamaica 299. Air Jamaica 299, you've cleared the rivet 3 arrival, runway 25. When ready, descend to flight level 210. Clear for the rivet 3 arrival and um, plan for runway 25. When ready, you can descend. Um, could you say again that altitude, please? Air Jamaica, when ready, descend to flight level 210. When ready, descend to 210, Air Jamaica 299. Now, I'm not sure, if you have a look at this guy, see how that little arrow in between the 221, that means he's descending. Now, I don't know why. So that's, see, this is picking that up straight away. He should be climbing. Alpha Juliet Golf, uh, Melbourne Centre. Go ahead. Alpha Juliet, might just confirm you're on climb to 280, sir? Yes, but I think, uh, let's, uh, can I... Go down to flight level 220. I think uh, there's uh, problems of FMC in the speed controller. Of uh, Juliet Mike Roger, re cleared amended flight level 220. Thank you for that. 220 is your goal. Like I said, I knew this guy was going to give me problems and true to form. So he obviously doesn't have a handle on his FMC and how to work it. He obviously hasn't looked at any YouTube videos, and there's about 4,858,635 of them. But he hasn't bothered to look at one of them to say, well, maybe I need to look at the FMC and how to work the autopilot and maybe do a few test runs. But obviously he thought, well, you know, I've got all this under control. I'll go straight on to VATSIM and um, give somebody a bit of a headache. I think um, so that's why I get on to VATSIM because I love it. So anyhow, okay, so uh, is he heading to Cambridge, just departing now, I'll hand you over a bit earlier, okay. So somebody's, this guy's going to Canberra and he's going to head him off. So um, nothing really, I'll probably, I'll uh, stop the video, what are we looking at now? We're looking at almost half an hour, so... Um, yeah, and he, this guy still, I don't know, I don't, if anyone knows how to clear this, please tell me because it's a pain. 
And I know it's something to do with left of track, right of track, blah, blah, blah. Now, he's still descending, see? So this guy's going to be a real pain. If he keeps going, he'll be outside of air controlled airspace, and which is the lower limit is echo at what, flight level 125. So he, he just doesn't have a handle on what's going on. And, you know. Jet Star 520, star clearance available. Just star 520, you're cleared the river through arrival, runway 25, when ready, descend to flight level 210. Just star 520, river through arrival, runway 25, when ready, descend to flight level 210. And um, am I meant to be on the snowy frequency or what I'm going? Uh, stand by, sir. No, no I'll, I'll tell you when you can change frequency. Just star 520, thank you. I thought I was um, on the wrong one. Yeah, you should be on 124.0, sir. Yeah, that's the one I'm on. Just checking. Qantas 455, via the start, descent to 5000. Descent via the start of 5000, Qantas 455. Now, there's another thing too, also, um, when do you actually start saying via the star, descend to blah, blah, blah? Well, basically, when they've commenced their star. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Before, I said when ready, descend to 210. And um, I remember people were saying that, and probably myself included, that said via the star, descend to 210. Well, you never had the star. The star was never had commenced. Uh, when you gave them the initial star clearance because the star starts at Lizzie and it goes and it terminates until you hit the, the... Basically, this is the star here, if I hold this. It starts at Lizzie and it goes there till Belter and then Belter, this part here, is where the approach is. So only that is the star. So no point saying if they're out here via the star descent to uh, 9 at the... Just up after zero initiation descent to flight level 2 and 0. Just star 520, thanks. So that's the, that's the thing. When they've actually commenced the star, that's when you say, via the star, descend to blah, 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 blah. Now, Swiss, I think this guy is SWO Swiss. Yeah, there it is, Swiss. So Swiss 173. I think I controlled him yesterday, actually. I'm trying to work out how to get rid of this, but anyhow, how do you get rid of it? Yeah, okay, so Sydney's closing, that's wonderful. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I might just close it down. Um, this guy's going to Canberra, so I've hit the negative sign. Yep, he needs to... This guy's finally worked things out. He's flying level. Oh, no, he's not. Obviously doesn't know how to work the autopilot. But anyhow, that's basically it. Um, I hope that's maybe enlightened a few people. I'm not sure. I'll just actually get this guy down to 9,000, then I'll, I'll hand off. Air Jamaica 299er, descent to 9,000, Sydney QNH 1010. QNH 1010 and down to 9,000, Air Jamaica 299. And Swiss 173 is on CPDLC, whatever you call it. G'day with you. I think it might be a nice time to log off. All stations, uh, Melbourne Centre is logging off. Uh, have to uh, attend to other things at the moment. So until next time, see you all later. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully uh, it's been some sort of um, educational experience. If not for the education, then maybe the humour. Until next time, see you all later and stay safe. Cheers.